Manifest V3 is almost upon us. Over on the Chrome developers website, there is a Manifest V2 support timeline. As of January 2023, developers can no longer update MV2 extensions, and MV2 extensions no longer run in Chrome, except with the limited enterprise exceptions. And then by June 2023, MV2 extensions will be completely dropped, even with an enterprise policy. The long and short of it is that Manifest V3 is an updated way to make your browser extensions. It's going to have certain advantages, and on the flip side, it's going to have certain disadvantages. And this is where a lot of people are really concerned. One of the main concerns people have is that content blockers, ad blockers, whatever you want to call them, are not going to be able to function under MV3. It is not a 100% accurate assessment, but looking at the way it's being done, I can see how you come to that conclusion. Now, this isn't something happening just in Google Chrome. This is something happening in the base Chromium project. So you're pretty much not escaping this if you're using Chromium. Using on Google Chromium is not going to help you. If you're on Chrome, if you're on Edge, if you're on Opera, Vivaldi, pretty much anything based on Chromium, I say pretty much, I'll get into one thing later, is going to have Manifest V2 removed. But there is one Google-backed company that is taking a different approach with their browser, that being Mozilla and Firefox. So this was discussed in These Weeks in Firefox issue 124. Web extension Manifest version 3 has been enabled by default in nightly and early beta builds starting from Firefox 106. However, Again, a reminder that Mozilla plans to continue support for the Manifest V2 blocking web request API. This API powers, for example, uBlock Origin, while simultaneously supporting Manifest V3. So, most of Manifest V3 is totally fine and completely uncontroversial, so it's fine to move up to it. But they're going to be keeping the part of V2 that everybody wants to stick around. This was originally discussed back on May 18th, 2022. Most of this I'm just going to skip over. There's one part I do want to focus on. What are we doing differently in Firefox? Web request. One of the most controversial changes of Chrome's MV3 approach is the removal of blocking web request, which provides a level of power and flexibility that is critical to enabling advanced privacy and content blocking features. Unfortunately, that power has also been used to harm users in a variety of ways. Chrome's solution in MV3 was to define a more narrowly scoped API, declarative net request, as a replacement. However, this will limit the capabilities of certain types of privacy extensions without adequate replacement. So Mozilla will maintain support for blocking web requests in MV3. To maximize compatibility with other browsers, we'll also ship support for declarative net requests. We will continue to work with content blockers and other key consumers of this API to identify current and future alternatives where appropriate. Content blocking is one of the most important use cases for extensions, and we are committed to ensuring that Firefox users have access to the best privacy tools available. Now, is this going to lead to a big jump in Firefox users? Is everybody suddenly going to come back to Firefox because they want to keep using their ad blockers? Maybe someone will. I think some of the techie users who know about Firefox and were considering using it anyway, maybe they will use it. But as for regular people, most are going to say, hey, the extension isn't available anymore. I can't find the extension to install it. Okay, I'm just not going to use the extension. They forget it ever existed and go about their day. Now, I want to correct a lot of the early reporting, a lot of the misunderstanding about what MV3 is going to do. Because MV3 is not going to completely break your content blockers. They are still going to work. I say work in air quotes because they're going to be severely crippled to the point of not being viable. Right now, you can go and download them right now. There are two MV3 content blockers available. The first one being AdGuard. AdGuard publishes the world's first ad blocker built on Manifest V3. Now keep in mind, this is their own blog post. So a lot of it is kind of just sniffing your own farts and making themselves seem a lot more important. But I want to focus on the issues they had 
trying to build the extension, because it was not as easy as it was before. Chrome set a minimum guaranteed limit of 30,000 rules per extension, and a total limit of 330,000 rules for all extensions installed by a single user. This also takes into account the total limit of 1,000 regex rules per extension. The trick is that one extension may get all of the allowed amount of rules, or there may be more than one, and then perhaps some of the extensions will fall short of the limit. If this occurs with our extension, and this can happen at literally any time, e.g. after an update, service worker restart, change a filter set in our or third party blockers, it will show a message saying the browser has modified the list of active filters and left only AdGuard basic ad filter enabled. In the worst case, even the basic filtering might not be enabled because it contains more than 30,000 rules. Then the user would be left without ad guard protection. And then for the dynamic rules within which users can add their own rules or filters, there is a tiny limit of 5,000, including the limit of 1,000 regex rules. If this limit is exceeded, ad guard MV3 will only be able to apply the first 5,000 rules, and the rest will remain inactive. Now you might be thinking, well, 30,000 built-in rules and 5,000 user-defined rules sounds like plenty of rules to do content filtering, and it's enough where you can do some level of content filtering. However, the current version of uBlock Origin with its default configuration, 125,000 rules four times the limit. Even in AdGuard, if you use the full version, it is 71,000 rules. But unlike some people want to think, Raymond Hill, otherwise known as Gore Hill, has not given up. He's the creator and maintainer of uBlock Origin, and he is working on his own experimental plugin, previously going by the name uBlock Origin Minus because, you know, it's playing off of Adblock Plus. This is a worse version, so it's minus. And now going by the name uBlock Origin Lite, and like with AdGuard, is available for download. Now he has done a big write-up about this along with MV3 and AdGuard's approach as well. And the long and short of it is basically to make a content blocker in MV3, uh, MV3 basically falls apart. It's supposed to be a more performance system, and it's not, it actually uses a lot more CPU and a lot more memory. Extension is supposed to have a lot less permissions to the rest of your browser, but that doesn't happen. And the amount of rules you have available pretty much just makes content blocking not as viable. So if you want to use uBlock Origin Lite or AdGuard MV3, seriously temper your expectations. They are nowhere near as powerful as their previous solutions, and in many cases, the ads and the things you want to be blocking still do appear and then get hidden after they've spawned. Not at all what you want to see happening. Now, this is where the Google developers are absolutely brilliant. They could have said, in MV3, content blockers are going to be impossible. We don't want these things to exist and you are not going to be using them. But if they did that, that would have been this worldwide story, global news, so they don't actually want to break them. What they want to be doing is to stop you using them. So what you do is you limit what they're able to do to the point of basically annoying the user, where they're half doing the job, half not doing the job, and users think the plugin is broken, and then they stop using it because it isn't doing the job anymore. And look at that. You've solved the ad blocking problem without causing a massive controversy. But even better, because some content blockers still do exist, you're going to have people that think it's not a problem full stop and are basically acting as free marketing for Chromium. And they're gonna say, this is not a problem. You can use this. If you don't like it, well, that's your fault. It clearly works. There's no problem here. Now, when I said there was an exception Chromium browser, you may know who I was talking about. Brave. Obviously it's Brave, who else would it be? So their built-in ad blocker does not rely on this plugin support and is going to continue working basically in the exact same way. 
As for the MV2 support, Brendan Ike has discussed this a bit. This was back on June 9th. Brave will support uBlock Origin and uMatrix so long as Google doesn't remove underlying v2 code paths which seem to be needed for Chrome for Enterprise support so should stay in the Chromium open source, at least until June. Will Google Chrome Web Store really kick them out over v2? Will host if needed. Well, yes, if they don't work in MV3, then they're going to get kicked out. And reiterated basically the same point only yesterday. I've said if Chrome does as threatened and drops MV2 support, we'll continue to support uBlock Origin on Brave if the uBlock Origin team wants it. And this is not a done deal, keeps up their side of the maintenance. Brave, while being a fairly big Chromium browser, has nowhere near the level of resources that the main Chromium project has, not just the fact that it's backed by Google, just the sheer number of developers. So doing things like forking the Chromium project is not really viable. Maybe they could repatch in the MB2 stuff if they really wanted to, and rebuilding onto Firefox also is just going to be incredibly expensive and incredibly time consuming. So specifically supporting a couple plugins is probably the best approach. And there's only like maybe a couple of them that people really care about with MV3 anyway. Now, I don't know if I've discussed my general personal stance on content blocking. So I run Brave and I also use uBlock Origin. Some services don't play nicely with Brave Shields. So for those, I just use uBlock Origin instead. But I don't like content blocking on services that I frequently use that I know are safe. Things like YouTube, various wikis and things like this. Content on the internet has to be paid for somehow. I'm not of this mindset that everything that exists today is just going to exist with people not making money. That's just not going to happen. And most people aren't going to pay for stuff. You need some sort of system in there for the people who don't want to pay money to fund things. There was some attempts to do so with crypto mining, but those didn't exactly go too well. But like most people out there... I heavily rely on content blocking for the really sketchy sites out there, especially the sites that like to fill up the entire screen with ads to the point where the site is pretty much unusable. So I like the option existing, and I don't want to see it go anywhere. Now keep in mind, this is my personal set of guidelines. If you want to go and content block everything, you don't like ads, everything must be free, I don't want to spend a second of my time funding anything, fine your computer, I don't care. Do whatever you want. But do keep in mind that you're fighting a multi-billion dollar industry. You might think that ad blocking and content blocking is always going to be around, but this is a losing battle and it is only a matter of time until it can't be done without going to really extreme measures like setting up a pie hole, for example. And even something like that isn't going to be perfect. This is an arms race between a multi-billion dollar industry and a bunch of open source developers. I know which side I hope wins, but I know which side is probably going to win. But let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. Do you use a content blocker? Do you use a more hardware solution? I would love to know. And if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to my Pay link in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.